everybody, it's Sarah Griffith. In today's segment from Nesting School, we're going to talk about how to get ready to nest. Now, nesting is a natural instinct. It's actually something that's really going to happen just a few days before you have your baby. Everybody's story will be different, but typically what it means when you are quote unquote nesting is that you have this enormous burst of energy where you feel like you can organize the pantry or clean the house or do whatever, but it typically happens on the day of or days leading up to your actual labor if you aren't being induced. So while we are calling this nesting school, the true nesting won't take place until right up around your delivery time. I remember when my son was born, um, I went to the doctor's office that Friday and I had a check and they're like, yeah, you're good for now. Um, they stripped my membranes. They didn't tell me that they did that, but I later learned that that's what they did. So they stripped my membranes. I went home and the next morning I woke up and I was like, I was like set on cleaning our entire house. We have a four bedroom house, with three and a half bathrooms, we have a big home. Um, and I was on my hands and knees, like scrubbing the bathroom floor. My husband's like, I'll do it. Like what's gotten into you? And I just, I had to do it myself. And I, I looking back, that was the nesting instinct kicking in. Um, so I exhausted myself by cleaning the whole house. And then we spent that day shopping at the mall, we went out to dinner, I went to the movies, and then a few short hours later, my son was born. So um, I guess that was real nesting. But anyways, so what we're going to do, this is like our first true activity for nesting school, and I think it's a very important one to help give you a peace of mind. I want to talk to you about making lists to help get you on track. So I'm going to talk to you about two different types of lists that I have made, but I'm first going to tell you that... Um, <laughs> if you are a new mom, uh, this is your first time around, you're going to feel like you need everything. And while, yes, you do need a lot, you don't need everything. There are certain things that you're going to, you know, there were things that I bought that I thought I had to have with my first that I'm not going to be using for my second. Um, so I will tell you that the more you do this, the more seasoned you become and the more you can say, yeah, I'm going to pass on that or, oh, I actually really wish I had that last time. So what I did is I decided, because I'm a second time mom, I decided to look at what do I need that I don't have from my first pregnancy or my first child. Um, and I looked to see what were things that I didn't want anymore. So for my son, he's five, um, five and a half now actually, almost. And I knew that there were a lot of boy things, meaning they were very blue, they were very boyish. Um, I also knew that some of them were starting to be dated. Believe it or not, our car seat was about to expire um, that we had whenever we had him. So those were things that I knew I had to replace. Um, so I looked at what do I have to replace, what do I want to replace to make um, girly, because at the time um, we had learned that we were having a girl, and um, what do I just want to get that's new that wasn't necessarily around last time? So I sat down and I did that, and what I did, which I think was really smart, maybe if you're planning on having lots of children, I wouldn't do it, but if you know you're going to have two, and if you have a third, it'll be a little ways down the road, at least maybe, um, I would encourage you to go through stuff from your first pregnancy that you didn't use and get rid of it. I actually sold a ton of it in the mom swap sites. They sold it for a much better price than you ever would if you were going to put it in your yard for a yard sale. And I took all of the money that I made from that and I put it towards new stuff for this baby so that it wasn't a big financial expense because when you have a baby, you need everything and it's overwhelming um, and it's a lot to buy for. So if you can be ahead of the game by, um, you know, I don't want to say recycling, but getting, making money off of one thing that you, I mean, it was sitting in our basement in bins. We weren't going to use it. Um, we're planning to probably be done after this one. So anyways, that's what I did. I went through first. I did like an inventory of what do we have versus what do we need? And then... After I did that, so I'm going to show you, these lists look really rough. And the reason why they look really rough is because I am almost done with them. I've carried them around in my purse. They have been scoured and scrutinized and used a lot. But basically what I did is I broke down my list making into categories of 
what do I need? So for example, the first category was medical. And in that category, I put things like baby DHA, I put infant Tylenol, gas drops, saline, um, that new nose sucker, that nose Frida or whatever it is. We did not have that whenever my son was born, but now I, I did get it. Um, so I made categories. So I want you to do the same thing. Look at what do you need category by category. Um, some other categories. I'm going to just share mine with you so that you have some ideas. Um, I made a category for postpartum, which would be things that I need. I'm going to do a video for you guys on these topic, on like the topic of postpartum. So I'm not going to tell you what all I put in all of these. Um, but I made a topic for feeding or I'm sorry, a category, um, toys and books, laundry, you know, you need all that special laundry stuff. Um, big stuff, I called it big stuff, meaning that I knew I needed to replace my stroller. You can actually see it. I'm in the nursery. It's not done right now, but, um, so there's our stroller and there's our car seat. That was our biggest expense. That was about $400 to get that. Um, I knew that I was going to need uh, a rock and play cause, or a rock and sleep. I didn't have one of those when Carter was born and they were like the go-to mama item. So I did get a rock and sleep this time around. Um, I'm going to talk about the Dakotot later. Uh, I'll show you a video on all the products. But nonetheless, I wrote down the big stuff like the monitor, stuff that I needed to buy again. That was the stuff that I really needed to budget for. You know, I needed to know that I, usually with a baby, a second baby, you're not having a baby shower. So I knew that financially that was falling on me as far as purchasing it. Now, granted, we did have a sprinkle for the baby, but um, I bought everything. You know, the sprinkle was for fun stuff, little stuff. Um, I bought all the big stuff myself. So then another category was bath, um, breastfeeding, because I am going to breastfeed, um, blankets, uh, nursery stuff. So everything down from I needed paint, I needed a mirror, you know, I need a mirror, I needed um, a new humidifier, I needed curtains, like everything from that. So I wrote it all out. Um, and then I have a category for diapering. And then I have a category for just clothes as to what I needed. Um, one other thing that I did is I made myself a list, which you guys are going to, we're going to have a whole video devoted just to this, but I made myself a list of what do I need to put in my own hospital bag and what do I need to put in our, we're going to name our little girl Gracie. So what do I need to put in Gracie's bag? Um, and then that was another thing that needed to happen. So that's what my list looked like. And like I said, I've carried this list around with me in my purse and I've just crossed it off. I will say I started this list around week 20. Um, we're on week 34 right now. And I, like I said, the list is mostly done. Um, and it's because I've bought here and there little things off the list so that it didn't seem so extreme all at once. Now, if you go to Babies R Us, you know, Target, whatever, you can set up a registry. Now, here's my advice to all moms regardless if this is your first or your fourth, um, my advice is to make yourself a registry. Obviously, if you're a first-time mom, the registry is awesome because you're going to probably have a baby shower and it will help get you the things that you want. Now, if you're a fourth time mom and you're like, we're not having a shower, I'll teach you a trick. Most all of these places, you know, Babies R Us, Target, Amazon, they all, Pottery Barn Kids, like they all have a rewards completion program. And they'll send you a coupon about, mm, I want to say it's like six weeks before the baby gets here for you to buy everything you want off of your registry. So I would encourage you guys to make yourself a registry and as you're buying things you know all these things that I needed to buy I put them on my baby I put it I made like a baby's art rest registry and a target registry and I just shopped right off of it um, because I know that places like baby's R us they give you a um a gift card after the fact. So for example, we bought our, you can kind of see it in here, we bought our crib um, and our nightstand and our dresser. We bought all that from Babies R Us. And we're talking, I don't know, I don't know if it was $1,300 or $1,400, but it was expensive. And so now I'm going to get a gift card from Babies R Us after the the baby's here and you get it with, I want to say it's 10 or 15%, maybe 10%. Um, in a gift card of everything that was bought off your registry. So it's really smart to make yourself these registries, not just because of that, that coupon, but because 
They're also going to give you some free gifts whenever you make your registry and it's going to give you coupons to that particular store. So for example, now that I'm registered with Target, I keep getting Target baby coupons. Um, same with Babies R Us. So I would encourage you to do this even though it seems silly and people might be thinking like you're having your third baby, like why are you making yourself a registry? It's not for your Aunt Sue to buy you something and I mean if Aunt Sue wants to, you can say hey I do actually have a registry but really this is for you so that you can make the most bang for your buck when it comes to your money. So that's my suggestion. Um, if you are a first time mom or if you're just struggling with this category of what all do I need, um, one thing you can do is go to like Babies R Us and they're going to give you a, it's like a, a card that's double sided and on that card it shows you what the suggested amount is for each category. So like how many bottles do they suggest? How many blankets do they suggest? And it really helps give you a ballpark because when you're brand new at this you're like I don't have a clue what I need and you might have way too much of something and not enough of another item. So I would encourage you to do that and moms I don't know about you but for me I was rusty at this. It had been five and a half years. I couldn't remember some things so it was nice to have that list. Um, and again you can get that whenever you register. One other thing that I would suggest, um, if you're a first time mom, I would suggest that you ask and be ready for that mom to want to gab your ear off, but ask for advice. What, and, and kind of do like a survey, like maybe you're on social media, ask your, your friends or your followers on social media, hey, first time mom here, what did you get or what did you end up not using? You know, like what was the item that you wish you didn't spend your money on or you wish you didn't ask for? Um, for me, it was definitely like, this is silly, but for my son's room, we had like the changing station where we had the changing pad and all this elaborate stuff. And guys, I don't think I ever changed him on the changing pad. I literally think I changed him on my bed, on the floor, on the blanket. Like I didn't use it. So that was just one little thing that I didn't need. And so when you look at Gracie's room, when I decorate it, you're not going to see a changing pad because I'm not going to be changing her in here. Um, to be honest with you, I've been so adamant about getting this room ready. I mean, the chandeliers hung, like everything looks so nice, but she won't even really sleep in here for a long time. So anyways, don't stress too much about your nursery. Uh, so the last thing that I want to tell you about, I'm going to wrap this video up soon, is I want to talk to you about making an actual nesting list. So we'll call it your nesting list. So you've got two lists to work on. You've got a list of what do I need? What do I need to buy? And then a list of what do I need to do in the next however many weeks until go time. Um, and this list should overwhelm you because you probably do have a lot to do. Um, but this list should also make you feel a lot better. I had like in my head, it just kept running through my mind like, okay, I have to do XYZ and XYZ. And I was like, honey, we have so much to do. And I was freaking out. And my husband's like, just write it down. We'll get it done. So we made this list and on the list, I'll just read you a few of the, th I'll read you what I have on it. Pack the hospital bags, clean out the closet, which is in my, this room, um, build the rock and sleep, sanitize the breast pumps. But you know what I learned? Um, so five years ago, this wasn't an option, but so I had a nice, a really nice breast pump. It's still really great. It's in the basement. Um, but I just learned that my insurance company will buy me another one and they're actually giving, giving me the same one that I have that I had five years ago. It'll just be five years newer. So I'm going to take advantage of that. So I won't probably be using my original breast pump. I may actually get rid of it. Um, but it, check with your insurance company, call them and see what the rules are. So for me, the rules are that I have to have the doctor call in a script from the hospital and they will have a breast pump waiting for me um, whenever we go home. So um, it's it's like a $300 breast pump that I didn't have to buy. So anyways, I don't need to sanitize the breast pump now. I may still do it because I'm OCD and I want it done. Um, but nonetheless, I wanted to just sanitize everything. Um, I need to clean the baby bathtub. We're still going to use my son's. It's blue, but who cares? Um, prep free, prep meals, freeze them. We'll do, we'll do a whole lesson on that. Um, paint the nursery, install the car seat, put up the pack and plays, set up the diaper changing station in the living room and the bedroom, schedule chiropractor appointments. I needed to do my taxes. Those are crossed off finally. Um, plan out when the baby, like contact the newborn photographer so that that's in the works. Um, make lactation cookies, organize the baby's outfits, pack and organize the diaper bag, wash and organize bottles, um, bring up the swing from the basement, wash it, uh, decorate the nursery. You get the point. It's exhausting. I look at this list and I'm like, oh, there's so much to do. But 
there's something really rewarding about being able to conquer it, know what you need to do, conquer it, and then um, it's fun too. It just gets you one day closer to having that little baby in your arms. So that's your homework for today from nesting school. I want you to make yourself those two lists. What do you need? And then what do you have to accomplish before the due date? Hope that was helpful. Have a good day. See you all.